So yesterday at dinner, who went to the network event? Okay, cool. Um, um, I was chatting with somebody and some got, somebody gave me a little piece of white cardboard with some letter on, on top. And I was like, you don't have to pay me. I thought it was a credit card, right? You don't have to pay me. They're like, no, this is my business card. What is that? We don't use business cards. <laughs> That's my business card. <laughs> All right, so my name, Andres Perez. I work for uh, Salesforce. I've been around here for 15 uh, years. First two years were in uh, developer support, basically helping customers when they had problems back then with uh, Apex and Visual Force, which was the only two things we had back then. Now we have Aura and Linux components and APIs and all this stuff. Back then we only had the SOAP API. Then they came REST and tooling and metadata and all kind of crazy stuff. So during the day, I work for Salesforce. I've been doing this job for 13 years. I work for uh, Salesforce use, uh, being an instructor, teaching something like this throughout the year. It's amazing in person with uh, students in the classroom. And that's me, El Toro IT. You can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, the QR code is for my, uh, for my uh, website, which I'm... Uh, I had a New Year's resolution, and as of uh, January 26, I'm still meeting it, which is blog frequently, not daily, because it, sometimes the blog takes a few days to write about data cloud. So I've, I have, I started about Christmas time, and I've had like 30 articles posted already, I think, on Medium, and you can find all that in. Uh, in uh, in El Toro .it. That's my uh, that's my website. So I'm I'm building a history. I'm building a case study, walking through a, uh, a company which is a FIFA. You guys heard about the uh, uh, soccer corporation, whatever it's called. Um, so that's a, that's actually a company it has customers. They sell merchandise and they sell tickets. At least in my fictitious use cases. And I'm building it like step by step how they will actually do and i'm going to do the full thing and i'll keep writing um uh, on that topic in medium you can search it you can find it right over here all right forward looking statements i don't need to tell you this i hope by now buy salesforce for how awesome it is today not for how awesome it will be in the future uh, copyright information of course all right Uh, da, da, da. So what are we doing today? We're going to start do, talking about data cloud, doing a very quick uh, overview, then how you ingest data, how do you harmonize it, some additional topics with regards to uh, ingestion. Then I have one section which I called, but wait, there's more. And then we'll uh, have a Q&A. I'll speak a little bit. We'll do a together an exercise. We'll do together an exercise, and then I'll speak a little bit. We'll talk about. We'll do a data cloud uh, overview. So, what is data cloud? Have you guys heard about the customer three hundred and sixty view? Well, finally, in my point of view, at least, it came a reality. Thanks, thanks, God. <laughs> thanks to uh, uh, data cloud. So we have our uh, customer here, and we have information about her on Service Cloud. She creates cases. Her name is Samantha Smith. I think she lives in uh, the UK, whatever that phone number is from, as her email. But also, she shops online because he al we also, the company that we're pretending to be now, we have a commerce cloud, right? <clears throat> and so we know about that, but, uh, she also does, we also have information about her in Marketing Cloud. Now, I'm just talking about Salesforce because that's who pays my salary. But if you have uh, other uh, e-commerce sites or whatever, and you dump CSV files into a Amazon S3 or GDP, Google Cloud, Google Data Cloud or whatever, you can ingest all that data. I'm just, I'm just here following my boss, Mark. 20 levels down, but yes, <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> and one thing I want you to notice is that her name is not spelled 
exactly the same way in the different systems. She may be called Samantha or Sam or just S. Also, the format of the phone number is not the same for every single character, right? In, in service clouds, we don't, well, in, in, in the e-commerce, we do have a plus and spaces and dashes. Here in the uh, service cloud, we have just digits, right? So that's, if you were doing a, an equals, exactly matching, you will not find your customer. But that's one of the cool features about uh, data cloud. And also that happens as well for the uh, emails. All right, cool. So now that we have all the information collected for each of our customers, now we know everything that we need to know about our customers. And that's what data cloud is gonna help you with. All right. How does Data Cloud works? Well, the first thing we're gonna have to do is that we're gonna have to connect to Salesforce org or to AWS or to Google Cloud. Once we are connected, then we can ingest the data. Basically means load the data. We do that either through a, a batch ingestion, where are you? Or a streaming ingestion. And we can do some uh, transformations Think about them in Salesforce like formula fields that operate like in a row level. Once the data is ingested from different systems, then we harmonize it. Now I want you to do me a favor, pretend that I ask you, write a SQL statement to get some data from some table. You say, oh, that's easy. Select blank from blank. Right? Can I just do that like blanks? Or do I actually need to specify the names of the fields and the name of the objects? Obviously, I need to specify those. Well, if I'm bringing the data from Salesforce CRM, there will be accounts, contacts, cases, leads. If I'm bringing that from my AWS, there could be people, issues, not cases, uh, right? Different table names, different field names. Actually, maybe even different data structures because you guys all know this, hopefully, I'm gonna make a big assumption, contact object in Salesforce, right? You can have shipping address or mailing address or billing address, something like that, right? So you can put two addresses. What if I need a third one or a fourth one or a fifth one, right? Or a six, right? So, um, you could have multiple, um, it, and that's because in in Salesforce uh, CRM, the contact object is what we call denormalized, right? We have all the information in columns. In other systems, there could be a normalized database where, and that's actually the case that uh, Data Cloud is gonna be like, we have something called emails, which is a child object of um, contact. Right, and that's how Data Cloud actually works. That allows you to put an infinite number of that. So you need to do the translation from your names and your schema into Data Cloud database that we're gonna use. Because we need to know the names of the fields, the names of the objects, and the normalized, denormalized, the object the structure, all that stuff. So that we can write the SQL queries because otherwise we would not be able to write the SQL queries and we won't be able to write the code for data cloud. And we need to know that. So what is the best way of us knowing those names? I'm gonna give you the database schema and your job is to put your data in whatever shape it is into the shape that I want it. And that's what harmonization is all about. Once it's harmonized, then we do something that's called unifying. This is where we don't care if it is Sam, S, or Samantha. We don't care if, it, if it, the phone number has pluses or spaces or dashes. We're gonna unify all the data. And the idea is, if your company has 1,000 customers, 1 million, whatever number you want, 1,000 customers, we're gonna create 1,000 buckets. And in each bucket, we're gonna put all the information we know about that particular customer. And that would allow us to have 
the customer 360. And we're going to be able to put everything in a bucket, regardless of how you spell your first name, your uh, email, your phone, et cetera, et cetera. That's what unifying is all about. So now that it's all unified and we have all the information of all our customers, let's for a minute think that there's only 1,000 of them. We need to find out which of those customers have blank, have created cases, have not created cases, have made purchases, have not made purchases, have purchased online, have purchased on store, have purchased both places. Whatever type of information you want to now segregate or segment your customers into so that you can market them better. So you can help them better. If there's a customer that we know that is creating three cases on a particular product, we're going to say, you know what? I think that probably the product you're trying to use is not the best. We do have a better product or a different product, right? So we can market them, we can help them, we can know what's going to happen. That's what we're going to do, analyzing, acting, which is basically sending the data back into Marketing Cloud, back into Salesforce, back into Amazon S3, whatever you want it to do. Once it has been unified and uh, harmonized and unified. All right, cool. So we start that picture from the first box, which is the ingestion, basically bring the data into Salesforce. In order to work with data cloud, you have two provisioning options. Okay. First option is you're a small, medium sized company which only has one production environment. How many of you have only one production environment? All right. And that's the picture I'm talking about right here. So in that case, it makes sense to install or configure data cloud inside that single production environment. How many of you have more than one production environment? Thanks, Leah. <laughs> Actually, we have GAS, Org 62. I don't know if you still have access to TNC Org. <laughs> but yeah, we have multiple. Those are uh, when back in the time, the good old times uh, when uh, Leah was an instructor. That's, that's what I met her uh, 13 years ago. So happy to see you again, Leah. Thanks for coming. The other option, if you have five production orgs, I've actually worked with uh, about a year ago, I was delivering training to Amazon, they have like over 300 production environments. Crazy wow. stock, yeah, I know. Actually, I've heard that we are trying to convince them that you don't, they don't need that many. <laughs> but nonetheless, if you have five production environments, on which of those environments are you going to install Data Cloud or configure Data Cloud? And what I'm suggesting is in none of them, create a sixth one where you have Data Cloud standalone, you bring all the data here, then you process all that, because it's possible, I was actually talking to somebody at lunch and they were telling me about their uh, their uh, company, their business, and it was a really interesting use case. And um, they were saying, we only have one production environment and all the contacts, we have some clean data so that each person, we know it only there once, so there's no duplicates. Say, so you guys don't need data cloud. But if you have, multiple environments, five production environments, it's possible that the same person, one customer, could be in different, in different, right? So let's say you have one org for sales, one org for service, right? The person buys and complains, hopefully not that much, about a particular uh, product, so they will be on both orgs, right? Or a very typical uh, use case, many years ago, I used to uh, deliver training for uh, Verizon. They have two, basically two production environments. One is corporate phones, the other one's personal phones, right? Because the way that they deal with the plants is uh, different and stuff. So, but it's possible that the same person who works for a company also uh, has a personal phone, right? So it could be in multiple places. So in that case, on which of those orgs are we gonna put it? Then create another one and set it right there. In the next exercise, we're gonna go by the simple solution which is just have one org and install everything on that single org. 
which is what we're going to do on this particular step uh, over here. All right. Did everybody get the exercise guide? Who did not get the exercise guide? If you didn't bring your computer, you can still go through the exercise guide and see what I'm doing. So over the weekend, next week, if you have some time, you can do these exercises. Uh, unfortunately, for those guys who are online, I don't have a way to communicate with you. So you cannot ask me questions. So I can, if you get stuck, you can't. But if one of the, you are doing the exercise and you do uh, have an issue or something, just raise your hand and I'll uh, help you out. And um, what we're going to do now is do exercise one when you're going to ingest data from Salesforce. Okay. And let's do that following the exercises. I need to put my glasses on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to log into one of the orgs. This is the production environment. So we go into login that Salesforce. Username, it's a one, my username. It's a, what's my username? All right. One of the hardest parts, believe it or not, is actually logging in. <laughs> That's still the same case, uh, Lee, after these years. Logging in is actually the first part. All right. Okay. All right. So in here, I'm going to go into a lead. Oh, no, I need to change to the sales app first. I'm going to go to sales app. I'm going to go to leads. And uh, all leads, all open leads. Oh, no, I need to shut this down. And we have two leads. And I'm going to um, ingest those two leads into a data cloud. Even though they are in the same org, data cloud stores its data in Amazon S3. So the fact that it's here, doesn't mean that it's in, in, in there. So we will need to connect and uh, ingest. All right. So then we'll go into the uh, gear and go into data cloud setup. Yes, Leah. Are you the troublemaker today? No, you're reading exercise three or something. Oh. Oh no, you're right. 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 No, I'm not following instructions. Yeah, click on my name, Andres, and look for the details. And uh, then set the yeah, because that's the value we're gonna ingest uh, down down the road. So avenue, um, not avenue, annual revenue. There you go. One M. This is something really cool I learned a few years back. You can just put an M, and it will put the zeros for you. Four million, wow. right? One, two, three, four, five. You don't count them. <laughs> oh, in that case, I'll count it twice. <laughs> All right, click save. Now we have an annual revenue of one million. Thanks, Leah. All right. So now we're going to go into the setup. So click on the gear and not setup, which is probably what you guys are uh, familiar with but data cloud setup. This is a brand new um, interface. Now, I, I am, I, sorry, sometimes I get struggle with uh, English. I can write, I can speak Apex better <laughs> than English sometimes. So, um, forgot what I was gonna say. What, did, what was I gonna say? Oh, you get that, you get the setup, the, um, the data cloud setup? because I have one permission set assigned to me, which is called the data cloud admin. It's a permission set on orgs that have the data, cl the data cloud uh, configured, right? Get the licenses or whatever. Now, nowadays actually after a uh, Dreamforce, everybody has that in their uh, production uh, as far as it is uh, enterprise or what, did I just say that? Yeah, unlimited, I think. One of those orgs, um, you get that. So you'll have the ability to assign yourself a data cloud admin permission in the data in the data cloud org and you'll have that set up and in here we're going to see all the different ways that we can connect from data cloud to other environments one of them is called the salesforce crm all right and by default your org your data cloud is connected to itself Assuming that you were on this side, you only have one production environment, so we already have that connection. 
If you were on the other side where you have five production environments, you get a sixth one, then you're basically gonna need to create a new and then connect into a sandbox or connect to a production or whatever to get that uh, information uh, uh, from there as well. But we're connected to itself and that's what we're doing today. We're keeping it simple. All right, so that's done. What we also need to do is install something that is called a bundle. And we're gonna work with a sales cloud bundle. The sales cloud, you just go by uh, install. So right click, on, did I just say right click? Single click on that drop down, and then click on uh, install. It will take you to the app exchange. It will try to install a, um, a package, manage package, say install for admins, and just click on uh, install. While that is being installed, a bundle is something that is gonna give you a lot of, inf uh, a lot of help when you want to either work with the sales cloud or the service cloud. When you're working with the sales cloud, it will ingest, and harmonize, remember mapping for whatever structure you have into the structure. Have we met again? Have we met before? Okay. Yeah. I think it's the first time. First time. You look very similar to many years ago when I was starting on Salesforce. The guy who worked for IT and I used to break my computer. He used to fix it. You you look very similar <laughs> to that person. I was like, wow, well, that's a weird coincidence. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All the favors that he did for me back then. Uh, so the sales cloud will ingest and harmonize um, accounts, contacts, and leads. Service, uh, there's two versions. The latest version does accounts, contacts, cases, and 20 more objects. The original version just did three objects, and I kind of like to go on with the original version. Um, I have a, I, one of my blogs that I have is about that particular thing. How do you install the, the older one? But for this exercise, we're installing the sales cloud bundle and we're good. And it will do the harmonization. Um, now the harmonization or mapping requires that you know your original source system in AWS 3, whatever the CSV files have, the columns, the data, whatever that means to you and then ingest it or map it into what data cloud is providing to you. We don't know what your data looks like, so you have to figure that one out. You a lot of documentation for that. Uh, but when we deal with a Salesforce, Salesforce knows the source system because they build it. They know the data cloud system because they build it. So the bundle will allow you to connect um, most of that and do the mapping. So it will give you a very, uh, a, lot of, a lot of work will be done for you thanks to that. And we're gonna review Account, contact, and lead for the sales. Correct. That is correct. And 23 objects for service. And if you have custom fields in the account, it won't do it, of course. If you're bringing opportunities, you have to do the mapping yourself. But uh, for yeah, for those objects, they will do the work for you. <laughs> yeah, well, you know Salesforce. We like to change things. Once you think you understand Salesforce, we change the names. <laughs> that's been happy. That's been true like forever. All right. So, oh, I should have clicked done. So I was talking while it was being installed. Oh no, it was. I did talk while it was being installed. I just clicked it done. All right. So done, and we are done installing that. All right. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the front end, right? Like just like your users go to a sales or service, whatever. In Data Cloud, you also configure a lot of the stuff on the front end rather than on the setup menu. Some things are done on the setup, as you saw, enable in a connector, but the actual process of ingesting, it's done through an app, which gets the name, Data Cloud. All right, with a little bunny. All right. So we're gonna go to the data streams. 
tab. For those of you who are following, did I just click it? There we go, data streams. And we're gonna create a new data stream. A data stream is basically how you ingest data into a uh, data cloud. Click new. Why is my mouse not clicking? Oh, sorry, it's too late, it's too slow. Maybe, oh, this is not, this is not my screen. This is my screen, which is being broadcasted. And then I'm seeing whatever the people, so there's a delay and I click a button, it doesn't happen because there's of course a delay. So you select, select sales for CRM, make sure that you do have a blue check mark right over there. And then somewhere over here, you click next. We did install the Salesforce, not the Salesforce, the sales data bundle, right? Or the sales cloud bundle. We didn't install the service. So if we click this one and try to do next, it will say, dude, you need to install that one. This one will ingest 23 objects. We'll ingest 23 objects, which are account, case, contact, and 20 more. Sometimes your org may not have all those. Like you need to have like Omni Studio. I, I have no idea what that means, but you need to install all that. And if you don't, then maybe the, ver the previous version, which only did account, contact, and cases, would be enough uh, for you. So in this case, we're gonna and, and and you need to install the bundle, of course. But in this case, we're going to do the uh, the sales um, the sales bundle. So put a check mark. Make sure that is blue, and click next. We're ingesting data for account, lead, and contact. These are the fields that we're ingesting. Not every field is automatically selected. If you want to ingest those fields, you can just uh, click on it and select it. By default, it doesn't uh, include the support level on the account. Uh, you can review the fields also for leads, and you can review the fields for a contact. And you say, yeah, I'm happy with that. So we're gonna click next. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna create three objects in data cloud, data, three data streams, one for account, one for lead, one for contact with the org ID. Because if you're like the customer that has five or 300 like Amazon and you bring accounts, well, these are the accounts from this org and the accounts from that org. So it will tell you which org you're ingesting from. Those are the names of the uh, objects. Think about like the S objects. Those are the names, but they're just called uh, objects or uh, tables in, uh, there's actually, there's called objects for now. Not as objects, but objects, because they are data cloud, not core uh, objects. So click uh, deploy. Once you start working with a data cloud, you're gonna see that spinning a lot because all those things happened asynchronously. It's not the same thing as what you are probably familiar with, which is in Salesforce, you save to Salesforce. Here you're saving to Amazon. So it does take a little bit of a uh, time. So we have to wait for that. Um, I went with a, uh, co-worker of mine to a training of uh, data cloud and we saw that thing a lot every time we saw it, we we gave it a word we call it coffee that means okay keep working <laughs> so by the time you finish shipping it just finished um, updating all right and a lot of things will be uh it's not instantaneous what it's what they call near real time basically slow <laughs> Near real time is the fancy word for slow. Thanks for laughing. I make a lot of effort to try to bring human into the room. Thank you. All right, cool. Now I can actually, we can actually do click on this guy and do a refresh now. Do that for every object. 
And again, it will say pending, and it will take a few minutes to get um, get um, things um, um, populated, right? Well, probably by the time we get to the second exercise, it will be uh, popular already. But what I'm going to do here is a trick that I learned by watching TV. You know those cooking shows where they put a cake in one oven and they take it out of the other oven? <laughs> and they do exactly the same thing. Or you guys are not going to even notice. <laughs> Except that I just told you what I'm doing. So I did this yesterday because it does take a little bit. And I actually have this on a different uh, org. I call it the bake org. <laughs> By the time we get to the next exercise, that should have been uh, completed. But right now, what the other thing that I want to show you is I brought account, contact, and lead. And later, we're going to do another object from an, uh, Amazon S3. And I'm going to go to something called the Data Explorer. The Data Explorer will allow you to view the data that it was ingested. So you can read or you can uh, select from here. We're going to select the data lake object. In 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 few minutes, I'll tell you about the different type of objects and what that actually that means. But for now, just select data lake object. No, no, no. This is not because your cake is not finished. It's not baked yet. <laughs> You're just watching for now. And if I select the lead, I will see the table, the data that I ingested. Two records. One of them was one million, which uh, thanks to Leah, uh, we did uh, change. And uh, the object has 56 columns. We're only seeing, we can only see 10 of them, but we can select which ones we want. So let's leave annual revenue. Let's remove everything else. And I'm going to do a full name. What is full name? And uh, you've probably seen this interface before because it's basically what uh, Salesforce uses for a lot of things. Uh, Oh, I didn't get email. Uh, phone and uh, company. So company. And click done. So you'll see that uh, my name, Andres, it's a uh, 1 million. And that's my phone number in case you want to call me. Somebody else will answer that. I got a secretary <laughs> answering the phone for me. Don't get a little bit upset, though, but that's, that's all right. All right. And that's basically the um, first exercise, bringing data into a data cloud. We're going to continue with some uh, slides. By the time we come back for the next exercise, the data should have been done. And you could potentially do what I just did with the Data Explorer to see that uh, data uh, there. Um, all right, so what we're going to do next is we're going to talk about something is called the harmonization. Very fancy word for talking about mapping. We already described it a little bit. Your data source schema looks different from the expected one. So we're going to provide you a schema, which is called the Customer 360 Data Model. Out of the box, it contains objects, which are called DMOs. We'll talk about those objects in a minute. Uh, fields, and those objects are related to each other. Now, that database is very complete. The schema is very complete. It covers a lot of different use cases. It may not cover one of your corner cases. And for those weird, far and apart, beyond whatever use cases you have, very specific, you may need to extend it and add an object, a field, or a relationship. But don't just create the account object because you couldn't find it on the documentation, right? Look for the documentation, find the objects that may not have the same names that you're expecting. But remember, that's kind of what we went back at the beginning and say, select blank from blank. It's not useful, right? So adapt your data to this schema. And the algorithms that Data Cloud built will work. You may extend it a little bit. Don't go overboard. Um, I guess 
same thing as we always say in, a, in code, do clicks, no code, right? St stick with the standard. It's kind of related to that. Stick to the standard as much as possible. Document there's a wide range of different objects that you have available. And all of them are very well documented. And that's actually the problem, that there's a lot of pages that you have to go through. So Salesforce created a concept called a subject area. The subject area is helpful for you to read the documentation. There's no button, link, UI on the tool that's called subject areas. It's the subject area is only for you to be able to read the documentation. Subject areas include the party DMOs, which is who is doing working with you, like accounts, contacts, uh, leads. We have uh, different objects, which we call contact points. There's a contact point email, contact point phone, contact point address, cont so that you can have multiple emails from different systems and get all of them. Because like we talked about before, on the contact object, you have mailing and shipping, two address. What if you need three, 20, 50, right? So it's better to do it normalized. And what that, that database is, it's a very normalized database. The second subject area is called uh, privacy. So uh, something that Salesforce, if you've read about uh, Trollhead so far, something that they push a lot on, it's uh, trying to be ethical. If the user or the customer gives you data, don't sell it, right? They may give you consent to send email or not to send email, respect that. So we have a whole bunch of objects that are gonna help you with that, which are under the privacy subject area. We also have loyalty. Before COVID, I used to travel for this job as a trainer everywhere, and I loved it. And I'm glad that I'm the back on the road Thanks, Leah, for inviting me to uh, Cactus Force. Um, and I collected miles with uh, Air Canada and points with uh, Mario Hotels. So I have a membership program with them. If you buy your groceries from whatever store, you may get some miles, whatever. those That's what the loyalty is all about. The more you buy, the more points you get, the discounts you get for putting gas or whatever the company is. I'm sure that your companies may have something similar for your customers. If you do, then use the loyalty of uh, subject area. Engagement. Engagement is like creating cases, doing sales orders, things that have like a timestamp. When I created a case, when I make this purchase, right? It has a specific timestamp. They are transactional. And in here we have, uh, like product uh, order, uh, you have a shopping cart, when did I put stuff in the cart, and things like that uh, nature. Uh, then we have sales order, when I purchase stuff, and we have the product demos, what I purchase, or what I'm complaining about if, if I'm doing uh, cases, right? So this is only to guide you, but this list is huge, to guide you to find the right page in the documentation to be able to know what fields they use and all that stuff. It's helpful to when you're doing the harmonization because you need to map to the database, which may not be very familiar to you right now because you haven't even started working with it. So to help you, that's why they created the subject areas. Very normalized database. There's an object called, sorry, I'm gonna have to do it from here. Uh, there's an object called the, uh, Individual, that's basically something that has a first name and a last name. We have an address, phone, email. We have uh, apps in case you have like a, uh, a iOS app for your customer so you can track that. And uh, you have a contact point social, so Twitter, <clears throat> X, and Facebook and all this stuff. They have a field called the party field. That's the lookup into the individual object. There's another object, which is called the party identification. The party identification is used for storing ways to identify the customer. Driver license, passport, uh, social security number, social insurance number. Um, one of those is used in Canada, the other ones in uh, the US. Well, I forgot which one is which one. And then, um, 
my miles, my Marriott, my Air Canada, my uh, grocery bill, uh, grocery name, whatever. All right. Now we have few different object types. The first object type is basically your raw data from your system, not even in data cloud yet. For simplicity, we're going to think about that as the CSV file. Sure, it may be a call. It may not be a CSV file that materializes to a CSV file because it goes through the API and gets a JSON. Think about CSV just for simplicity of terms. That's the data in the source. Once you ingest it, that goes into the data stream tab into something that's called a data source object, and that's basically the raw data in Salesforce now, like in Data Cloud now. Not on your AWS 3, but actually in Salesforce. Now, when you ingest, you can create formulas. So, uh, Data Cloud creates some uh, system fields. Those get created into something that's called a DLO. So the DLO is nothing else than the DSO plus formula fields. Because if we try to do the formula fields on the CSV, well, we can write to that file, and it would not be your CSV. It would be our. So we have a DSO and DLO. Once you harmonize, you're going to harmonize into something is called a DMO, data model object. The data cloud database, customer 360 data model, is made of, um, um, of DMOs. If you need to create a DMO, uh, you can do that as well, or a field in the DMO. And once you harmonize the data into DMOs, kind of forget about the DSO and the DLOs, because at that point, you're now going to start working with just DMOs. OK? All right, so that's the mapping. Then what you're going to do for segmentation, for activation, sending data to marketing cloud, all the stuff is going to be on the DMOs. And that's kind of important because the names of the tabs on the data cloud app are data streams, DLOs, and DMOs. All right, so then we come to this screen, which is called the mapping screen or the harmonization screen, where basically you have a DLO on the left. What is DLO? Data lake object. I like to call a thing here data left object <laughs> because it's on the left. I used to confuse left and right until my son went to a kindergarten and he told me that that means left. <laughs> That's not left. <laughs> All right. So, um, in the left, you have your data left objects, data lake objects. I just call it lake, uh, left to get you to remember things. On the right, you have your DMOs, what you're mapping into. Okay. Notice that you only have one DLO. Notice that you only have one DLO, but you have multiple DMOs. Why? Contact object, that's first name, last name, that will go into individual. First name, that will be, go, did I just say that? Email will go into contact point email. It will not go into the individual, it will go into a different object, right? So you need to have all those objects. Actually in here, I don't know if you can read, this is says account, this one says contact point address, this one says contact point uh, phone. So all the different uh, DMOs that you have in there. Those lines, those train tracks, are your mappings. So if you follow this line, this field on the DLO is being mapped to this, this field on the DMO. A field on the DLO can be mapped zero or more times. Um, can be mapped uh, zero or more times. So this one is mapped one. Actually, let me do something here. That one's mapped once. That one's mapped multiple times because it's the primary key. So the primary key is, makes sense to map it there. Once, and is there any twice? No, all right. So one, zero or more. They don't have to be mapped. We don't, cover, we don't care about that field, so it's not mapped. On the right side, your DMOs can be either mapped or not mapped but only once. You cannot get multiple fields and push all of them into here. You can't do that. 
any field that is not mapped, it will be under that particular section. And you can just expand it and find it and map it. And we're gonna do that in a little bit. And actually do it right now. So we're gonna do, yes, Leah. The DSO data source object is what you are ingesting. Data source object. DSO data source. Okay. If you add a formula field and actually data cloud adds some system fields, that will be a DLO. So DSO and DSO are very similar. That's what you're bringing in. Once you map it into the data model that we're giving you, those objects are the data model objects, the DMO. Well, that is a very, very good question. Give me, give me an example. Throw several examples, but give me one at a time. Okay, that's uh, that's a little bit complicated, which is fine. You want to do something that's called a data transformation or data transforms, which I don't have an example right now. Take a look at my blog. I'm, I talk about uh, data transformations in one of the uh, articles there. Um, and that is basically like doing a SQL query to parse things out, and you can do that. that another example would be, you, you start with the top one, unfortunately, but which is one. Another example is I want one field with the value X. Uh, to all the records should say X, 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 X. That's a formula field on the row level. Or maybe you want to do full name, not first and last. You put those two things together, that's a formula field. But if you want to do a more kind of crazy things, like parsing that stuff, maybe a data transform, or change it at the source, break it in the source, put it into CSV into different columns, and then ingest each of those columns in the contact point uh, address. Be I think it will be. One thing I like to do is, you guys heard about garbage in, garbage out. So what you're doing from your question, no, you're not gonna do it now because we're talking about it. Uh, what you're trying to do is cleaning the garbage. It's better to not have garbage than to clean the garbage, right? So do it on the source before you actually ingest all that stuff. As many, please. So, oh, I'm sorry. That is a uh, that is a simple formula field. I think I think you can definitely do that with a because formula fields have ifs or and you can do if value equals five. Then get this value or get get this or you can do that on the on the uh, but in this case we were doing string manipulation counting spaces or commas or whatever you have for the format of the address being one single line which if we are in uh, Arizona Phoenix Arizona if our customers are in Arizona it's easy if you have people in England people in Canada the zip code is different the postal postal code or a uh, some people do states, some people don't do states. Like, uh, I mean, if it is the Vatican City, so they don't have states because <laughs> there's nothing to group together, so it's only one, right? But, so then it comes really a lot of work, and then that's why I was saying go for the complex one with the data transform. I think your question might have been more of a unified state, too. So like, this, this fell into this version and not that version. Well, you're bringing two different objects. Good question. Good, good point. Thanks for pointing that out. I didn't realize that. I was only talking about one object, account or contact, not account and contact. Bring it all, map it. If it doesn't have it, don't map it. <laughs> Right? Or maybe a record has, a record doesn't. Map it. If the record doesn't, it will not be created. If it does have it, it will be created. Then it will be a, pro there will be a problem then later for the uh, harmonization. Yeah, but when you say you, they have to be mapped, uh, 
the DMO, it's only one or not. If you have no, you're going to map, you say street, street line number one goes to street number one. Street two goes to street two, city, city, state, state, country, country, so zip, zip, whatever. Right? So you're going to map it. Some records don't have the information. Okay, you're not going to create these records. Some records that have the information, you'll create those because some accounts I do have the address, some accounts I don't have the address. Yeah, but in this case, right, when we have uh, first name, last name, one data source. If you're talking about two different objects, you're talking about unification now, which is a process that we haven't talked about yet today or us in this session yet, which we will. Uh, if it is only one object that some records may have, they feel blank. That's what I'm talking about. The field exists. There's no data in that field for some records. Some other records do have data in that field. That's what I'm talking about. All right, we're going to do exercise number two, which is about mapping. So by now, hopefully, you should be. Uh, give me one second. Yeah, hopefully the cakes are baked. And this is this is 101. All right, so this is the right org. Okay, let's go back in here. That's what? That's uh, 11C. 11C. And this should be 11C? Yes. So if we go to data cloud in here, find data cloud. Uh, oops, scroll too far. Data cloud. Gonna close that one, that one. I'm gonna hopefully the data lake objects have records. Didn't find any contacts. All right. Maybe this is a very simple database. So we did get some records already. Okay, that's this is the DSO. These are the DLOs. These are the DMOs. All right, exercise number two. We're going to go to the DSOs and we're going to go into the lead object. We can all do this together. And this is the detail page for the DSO called lead and uh, the org ID. You'll see that it already has some fields mapped. And if we click on the review button, coffee. My friend is from uh, New York, right? So he says coffee, not coffee. All right, but now that we had the sip of coffee, you see all those are already mapped. Who mapped that for you? Something we installed. Oh, okay. The bundle. All right. All right. So, so some some mappings in here. Annual revenue is not mapped. We're going to map that. Now, I want you to pay attention here. Don't click anything. Just watch. Just because of the UI, it's a little bit not as intuitive as you, as you would think. So we're going to type in here annual. Don't do it. Just watch. I'll give you time to do it in a second. Type in annual. That filters down that field. Do the same thing here. Annual. And that gets mapped here. OK? So at the beginning, when I was trying to learn this, I was dragging the dot to that box. And that was actually a problem. You don't drag. You click. Scroll, notice the dash line, you click. Don't drag, click. All right, do it. <laughs> Dude, you get paid for doing this. It's not supposed to be fun. Oh, and whose fault is that, Leah? <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's continue. <laughs> there we go. 
Okay, now we are done with that. Save and close. Coffee. So we just mapped the annual revenue in the DLO to the annual revenue in what? No, we map it from the DSO DLO into into a demo. So let's go and take a look and see if that's true. Go into the data explorer, go into the data model, and select lead. And we should have the annual revenue in there and the values being copied from our DSO DLO into DMO. Objects. When you're doing the mapping, you would actually have to map a lot of fields. Yeah, or even Salesforce objects, if it is not a count on the case lead, you would. Opportunity or whatever else your custom objects, you do have to do the mapping a lot yourself. So you kind of like take it. Put a pin on that, because there's a very important topic that we're going to discuss towards the end about that very very important thing. All right, one cool thing about this tool is you can copy the SOCO query. So you can copy. Notice the object is the DLM. What does the M stand for? Model, all right. So that's the data, like, did I just say that? The data model uh, object. But this is a simple SOCO query. Where can we run SOCO queries? Give me, oh, did I just do, yeah, okay, no, it's good. Where can, where can we run SOCO queries very quickly? Yep, 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 let's do that. So I'm gonna copy that. Well, data loader, but we have to download and install and all that stuff. Much easier, much faster. How many of you have used the data, the developer console? All right, good. So we can copy that query here and, um, and run it. We're gonna run it, we're gonna, get two records back, right? Now, a couple of things that I want to point out as well. How many records are we limiting when we ingest, when we display this data? 100, all right. So what if you wanted to display 200? Sorry, you can't. Copy, paste, you can remove the uh, limit and bring all your data. So long as you have billions of records because otherwise the browser will probably crash, all right? Uh, you only have a limit of 10 columns. But if you are smart and you copy and paste and paste, you can get all the columns, okay? Um, you can get this from uh, whatever you run SOCO queries, data loader, data loader IO, uh, VS Code, uh, developer console, all that stuff. You get all, you get all that stuff. All right, cool. I forgot about something. Let's actually start doing this. Remember this app where you scan and get an org? All right. Get your phone out. Get your phone. Go back to that. And answer the question. We answer. We lost. We lost few people. So I'm not expecting whatever. Now 22. We got 22 users, but now we'll stop at. Let's see. We hit 10. Going once. Going twice. Okay. Well, our goal will be eight, nine, I guess. Ten. Yeah. There you go. I'll stop at ten. So the answer here is B. Okay. False. Because that's what unification, identity resolution will do for you. Next question. Four answers, five, six answers. 
Let's see, we hit 10, six, seven, eight, nine. One more. All right, my goal will be nine then. Um, a, we ingest, that's the first thing we do. And that will actually eliminate every other answer. <laughs> Harmonize it, which is the mapping. These are the two exercises we just did. Then we uh, unify, that's basically group your customers into buckets. And then you act on that particular data. All right, I have one more question. A couple more questions, I think. Five hundreds. Six. Seven. Eight. Can we go to nine? Nine. Oh, I got a, I got a, got a wrong answer here. Uh, Data Cloud must be provisioned in a new Salesforce org. No, it can be provisioned. If you only have one org, it could be the same org that you do have. If you have five, it's a good idea to provision a new org, but it doesn't have to be, or it must be. All right, let's take a look. We already did the harmonization, so we can do these four questions. I got eight answers. There's a little bit of discrepancy again, which is fine. Oh, 11 answers now, yay. It went up. All right, I'll stop right there. Because it needs to know the names of the tables and the fields. Otherwise, you will do select blank from blank and that doesn't run. <laughs> that doesn't work. Uh, it's a nice thing to have. No, I think it's a little bit more. We, we want you to actually get your data into that, uh, into the database and customer 360 data model that we provide. All right, next question. Kind of related to the previous one. <laughs> Different reworded. Seven answers, nine answers. Okay, I'll stop right there. Nine answers, everybody got it correct. Something that you must harmonize the data into is not something optional. All right, let's start another question. You have three answers now. Ten answers, woo, all right. Everybody got that one right. Didn't feel for that trick. And last one in here, start. While doing mapping, while doing the harmonization. What does the L stand for in the harmonization screen? How many answers? Seven, nine. All right, good. We'll stop it. And everybody got it correct. All right, good. Thanks for playing. I think I'll have one more quiz after the next section. But let's do a little bit more slides. Okay. So now we're going to cover a section which is called some. Ad Did you have a question? Yeah. Oh, stretching. Yeah. <laughs> good. Uh, we're going to do uh, advanced ingestion uh, topics. There's something called a category. So your objects, DSO, DLO, DMO, will have a category. The first category is profile. This is who. Basically, information about your customers. Customers, accounts, contacts, employees, email addresses, something that identifies a person 
And that is very important because when you segment your customer population, you're going to segment on objects that are profiles. So if you want to do segmentation, find the customers who blank. You're going to do that on the profile category. Second one is in the engagement. This is something that has a when, like a sales order, a case. It has a field. You must indicate a field which is of data type date time, not date, date time. And also probably more important, well, maybe or equally important, it has to be an immutable date time field. What does immutable means? It can't change. All right. So if I do a case, right, like a ticket support case, should I use created date or last contact date? That's immutable. The last contact will change every time I email something to the user, right? So you want to do an immutable. Otherwise, you're going to create dedupe, you're going to create a duplicate. Kind of behaves a little bit or part of the uh, primary key. If it is not a person, if it is not an event, basically just say other. All right. Data Cloud has four as of today, four different data types, text, number, date, date time. Coming on next release, Spring 24, which will be here about a month from now, maybe, something like that. We're gonna have other fields, which are field types, which are email, URL, phone, percentage, Boolean. Right now, Boolean is a text or a number, depending if zero or one or true or false. You gotta treat it as a text, which sometimes is gonna be a little bit hard. Spring 24 will fix that. But on your SOS system, you have a wide range of different data types. Like these are the data types on a Salesforce uh, as objects. So you gotta actually map those into text today, right now. That will change next month. Uh, those go into numbers, calendar to go into your date or data. Next, next month will sound a little bit better because I'm really excited about the fact that we'll have Booleans. We'll make it a little bit better to write the logic and work with that. You can create your own formula fields. So remember we were saying that sometimes I want this field, I want to create a field which is just an X for all of them, or maybe join first name and last, that's a formula field, okay? So with a formula field, you have things like, well, you gotta give it a name uh, or a label and a name. Gotta choose the return type, text, number, date, date time. Next month, few more. Then you can write the uh, different uh, fields or you can do a function. So we have ifs and some simple things like that. So in here, I'm concatenating a field to a hard-coded value. One really cool thing about this uh, UI is that I have a way to test my formula field, which is really, really cool. Um, you just write whatever value will be on a uh, customer in a field, populate that, click text, and it will do the result for you. And that's actually what we want. We want to create a field that will have some fixed value, uh, actually the primary key plus some fixed value for something else that we're gonna do later, the best place for that will be a formula field. All right. Now, in the two exercises that we did earlier, we ingested data from Salesforce, the same org, and we map it. But we can also ingest from other places. We have a AWS S3 bucket. Google Cloud Storage, we can import it from ingested from our marketing cloud, MuleSoft, Interaction Studio. We can have APIs. So we can programmatically ingest uh, the data into some of those uh, objects. In the next demo, I mean, it's not gonna be an exercise, it's just gonna be a demo, because I don't have credentials for everybody into my um, Amazon S3 uh, bucket. We're gonna ingest data, and I'm gonna show you the process of ingesting data from an Amazon S3 uh, bucket. You have these uh, slides, I'll give them to you somehow. 
Um, that's the QR code. Or actually, I think it is also on the on the exercise. Uh, oh, you already have those files. So on the slides, there's a QR code that takes you to a um, a particular article that I wrote on my blog. That one I made it free for you guys. You're welcome. To how you create an Amazon S3. So if you want to do the next exercise on your own, you have to go to that article, follow the instructions in how do you work with Amazon S3, create your own bucket, and then you can follow the steps for that. So I made I made it free for you with that with that QR code. And that's the next uh, demo we're gonna do. Um, which what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into let's close this little guy here. I can go quickly. Absolutely. You have this a file. You already downloaded that. Um, that, that that's fine. I'm gonna go into data streams. And I'm going to create a new data stream. Oh, I got some new data now. All right, so it was not finished. I now have a uh, contacts is 100 contacts that, that was missing before. I guess the cake is fully baked now. <laughs> we almost burned the cake on the oven. All right, because I forgot about it. All right, so we're going to do a new ingestion of data from Amazon S3. All right, anybody work with Amazon S3 before? All right, good. I was going to say, in case you haven't, that's basically storage where you put some files in there and you access them through the cloud. That's basically what that is all about. Except that it has some security and all that stuff. All right, then we do next. I need some information from here, which are in this guy right here. I need these numbers. I'm going to copy that. To, uh oh, no, here. Can I call that's the name? I'm going to copy that to here. I'm gonna copy that to here. I'm gonna do a CSV file. The directory where I have those files are going to be the uh, e commerce data which is gonna be this guy right here. The file name that I'm going to ingest is this CSV file right here. And I gotta give it a name, something that I can easily identify the records. And later when we get the data together and the DMOs and put it into a different object, this, this value is gonna be part of the record so we know where the record came from. And that's basically the name of that. And we're gonna give it a name of can be whatever name you want. Call it pizza if you want to. And next. Thank you. Thanks for coming. All right. So we're going to ingest that into a DSO. We're going to create a DLO. That DLO is going to have a, uh, we're going to create a new DLO, uh, which are going to, we're going to be called, uh, well, just going to call, um, Call it whatever, S3 uh, profile. Just because I don't like to type. All right. So here we have the category. This information contains first name, email, right? Birth date. So should that be a profile engagement or other? Profile, absolutely. The primary key is going to be the customer reference number. And we're going to take all these fields. So we just do uh, next. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Previous, I forgot something. We're going to actually create a formula field. So we're going to create a formula field. This formula field is going to be called uh, address ID. The instructions are a little bit longer, but I'm not going to about to type it in. This is going to be a text field. Okay. What we're gonna do in here, let me let me do it first. Uh, we're gonna look for something that's called concat. Oh, it's not finding it. Uh, text. All right, concat. Concat. We're gonna put a field. Oh, come on, let me make this a little bit smaller. All right, we're gonna go here. 
and we're going to find the reference number. We're going to get that field. Okay, we're going to get that field, concat, source field, the primary key. And what we're going to do in here, we're going to add a text in addition to that, which is going to be called contact point email. I'll tell you in a little bit what I'm trying to do. I promise, before I move away from this screen. Then let's say that the reference number is reference 001. I'm going to test that. My value is going to be ref tp email. Okay, now let's stop there for a minute and let's think about what did I just do. I'm going to bring data from my S3 bucket for a profile object which has first name, email, and a few more things like birthday or whatever. I'm going to map harmonize from that profile into the standard data model object called uh, individual. And I'll put first name, last name, birth date. Do I put email there? No. Where do I put the email? Contact point. Contact point email. Okay. So I'm going to create a new record, which is a child of this one. Okay. That needs a primary key. I'm creating the primary key. I do have the primary key for the contact, but I don't have a primary key for the email. So this is something very common. Little bit of transformation, not massive like what the question you were asking me about later, earlier, but something simple, you can definitely uh, do that. Uh, and that's basically what I'm doing. Okay, and that's basically tested, I did, and save it. Now go to the next screen. And then um, how I'm gonna absurd it, I'm gonna, how I'm gonna refresh. I'm gonna, actually, let's go to the bottom of this screen first. I'm gonna refresh hourly, daily, weekly, or monthly. When is that data changing? How often does that data change? If it changes every month, it doesn't make sense to refresh it every hour. Because by the way, I run into a problem with Amazon S3 is that every API gets charged. So on my, on my blog, I change from S3 into Google Cloud, which stores by charges per storage, not per transmission. And I only have 100 records for the demo that I'm doing. So it was wiser to do it through Google storage. All right, but if it changes every month, I don't want to do it every hour. In our case, it's not really gonna change. So I'm just gonna say none. But in a real scenario, it will be changing. And what do you want to do when it changes? You want to do an absurd or you want to do a full refresh? Wipe everything out and load everything or just put the deltas in? And it really depends on what you're doing with your data. If your data only has deltas, then you want to do an absurd. If it has everything, then you want to do a full uh, refresh, something like that. So it gives you the option. Click deploy. All right, and then we can go into uh, here, a little bit of uh, coffee there. We're gonna refresh this guy. It's pending, eventually we'll get the data back. And that's basically the end of that uh, demo. So we can bring data, not only from Salesforce, but we can bring it from other systems. We can bring it from multiple orgs or from multiple cloud systems. We could have data in Amazon, in Google Cloud, we can use our MuleSoft, all the different things to bring data into Data Cloud. All right. But wait, there's more. <laughs> all right, we have already talked about or done exercises for ingesting and harmonizing. Let's talk about unification. So what does unification mean? For our customers, Samantha, we have data in different systems. We are going to ingest and harmonize. We already learned how we actually did the, some of us did the exercises for that. The next step is going to do the identity resolution. What does identity resolution means? If you have 
a billion records, but you only have 1,000 customers, you should end up with 1,000 buckets. 998, because your data is never clean, or 102, that's all right, but not 5,000, not 200, right? If you got 5,000, you're not grouping enough. If you got 200, you're over grouping. So make sure that you know what kind of value you're expecting, that's very important. The way that those records get together is by something called the matching rule. So once you match all the records, you say all these records are for one user, one user, I keep saying user, one customer, we create something that's called the unified profile. And it will create a record, in addition to all of that, create one record that has the information about the customer. The first name, last name, email, all the information for that customer so that we can easily identify that. That record is the one that I'm doing here with little purple token. And that's, you'll see this picture, what I bet. So that record is that purple token. Which fields do I decide that I want or which values do I want for the first name? Sam, Samantha, S, right? For the phone, where's the information coming from? I got three options. Choose a system. If I'm doing an e-commerce site and when the customer logs in, they get an email with a token or an SMS and they copy that and now they are in, guess what? We just verify that we have the correct email address. So the email could come from the e-commerce site. Now they buy, they buy water, right? So we're gonna ship it to them. The shipping system has the correct billing address because if the guy doesn't receive it, guess what? He's gonna create a case. Where's my water, right? So the shipping system will have the address, okay? So you decide where is the information coming from and that's the reconciliation rules. Where are you gonna get the right information for that particular object, for the one you're creating? But, actually, but this is not a mass, this is not a golden record, okay? Kind of. That, kind of similar to a golden record. The unified profile is not the golden record. Why? You want to think about that as a keychain. Together, joined together, linked, you have the golden record plus everything else. So you know which email the customer wants to receive marketing emails because that's the email they told us. Not the one that we think they should validate it, but when we do a marketing campaign, we're gonna send it to his personal email, not to his corporate email, right? We're gonna respect his decision or her decision, right? So we get all the information together and keep it together as a bucket with all the records. We're not losing data. We keep it together, which is a huge difference from a golden record. Because what's a golden record? You start with three first names, we keep one. What are the other two? Poof, gone. We start with three emails. We keep one. What are the other two? Poof, gone. Here we keep them because we're talking about their ring so that we can respect the decisions. We, we have the traceability, which is where is the email coming from? And when I, when I activate to Marketing Cloud, send the Marketing Cloud email that they want to use. All right, so what does that mean? Boom, we talk about unification. Now we need to talk about segmentation. Of all your customers, you want to find the customers who blank, who created cases, who didn't create cases, who purchased these flowers, who didn't purchase the flowers. So blah, 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 right? You want to find the groups. We do that through the UI, very easy, inter well, very easy interface. I mean, no code. You just configure, okay, I want them to follow this, where the order is canceled and they're in training but also where they, they didn't get charged or whatever. I'm not even reading there, but that's kind of basically the idea. Find the customers who blank. Once you go through your harmonization, unification, segmentation, you have your DMOs, then you create your segmentation. You're gonna export that data. You're gonna create something that's called an activation target. What is an activation target is, where do you want me to send this data? 
What data? Segment. Where? Activation target. So that creates an activation. And that can send it either back into data, um, data, data cloud or into any external system. What does that mean? We talk about those two things already. Warning, do not start by clicking buttons. Big, huge mistake. Somebody was asking me about earlier and I said, put a pin on it, put a pin on it, because we'll talk about this. I'm talking about it. You have been warned. Clicking buttons is easy. Easy clicks, easy slips. But fixing them is a trick. Actually, I got that. I stole that from my chat GPT. I said, okay, give me a cool message that I can put in the slide <laughs> that talks about clicking. Okay, well, so what am I talking about? When you're working with data cloud, how many of you are, I'm gonna, I'm gonna divide you guys in two groups. How many of you are partners who works building solutions for other companies? Okay, how many of you are the other companies that the partners build solutions for you? All right, good. When your partner, you don't know what they're using their data for or how their data is done. Make sure that you work together with them. They own the data, they know what data they want and what they want to do with the data. So the first thing that you're gonna do when you start a project, it's define the use cases because the use cases will drive the whole thing. When the customers purchase things online, I want them to see how many people are buying online three times or more in the last six months because I want to give them discount. What does that mean? I don't bring to bring POS point of sale physical stores data into data cloud, right? So the use cases will tell you what data you want to bring, what the data is, what fields do they are, what are they gonna map into? Okay. So the use cases are gonna drive everything. Which segments do you want to create? The customers who has purchased online three things over the last six months. So you, what data you're gonna ingest? You're, gonna, you're not gonna ingest um, inventory or whatever. So only bring the data that is required for solving those use cases. Which systems to connect? For each DSO, what category and data types are each of the fields that you're bringing in? For that, the best idea is to build a spreadsheet I have that, I'm actually the, not the last article I wrote on my way to from Toronto, but the one before, I, I, I went through the FIFA use case, analyzing their data, their use cases and building that spreadsheet. Uh, so read that, it will give you a really good idea of how you get that, that data there. Um, it will also help you with the mapping. What fields are you gonna be mapping to which fields? What does this field mean for the customer or for you if you are the customer? What is the data cloud? similar field and object that you're gonna be doing for that. We do not need, do we need a new DMO or new fields or new relationships? If you think you do, think twice. <laughs> and then if you say, yes, I really, 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 really do, then create it, not before. Don't create it because you couldn't find it on the documentation. And like I said before, if you're a partner consultant, work with your customers. Salesforce professional services, on a data cloud project that lasts three months, the first two are in pencil and paper. The last one is clicking buttons. Don't start clicking buttons. Another article that I wrote is how difficult it is to, do, to fix mistakes in data cloud. I think this is the last slide. One of the projects that I work with, I brought data from a CSV file and I, what's the word, I neglected to look at the data and do a proper analysis. The dates were the years had two digits, not four digits. So the year was 23, not 2023. So, but I neglected to do that. And when I loaded the data, it loaded as 1923, not 2023. So I ingested, I harmonized, I unified, I segmented. I didn't find any records because nobody had purchased in the last six months. <laughs> I was not looking for a hundred and hundred years plus six months ago, right? All right, 
So go back and actually wrote about this again on, uh, on my blog. Go back and edit the field. You can't. Cannot edit the field. Can delete the, you cannot delete the field. Delete the object and load it again. Well, that object is being used by the segmentation. Okay, delete the segmentation. Delete the object. No, because it's being used by the uh, unified. Okay, delete the unified. Delete the object. Nope, because it's being used by the harmonization. Okay, delete it. Crash, new org, start over. So fixing mistakes is not easy. Fixing mistakes is, what, is, what did Jack GPT say? Easy clicks, easy slips. But fixing them is a trip, and it is a huge, horrible. No, I wish it was. I wish it, I wish it was a Disneyland trip. No, it's a, it's a Halloween trip. <laughs> Last thing, just for uh, commercial break, uh, I'm gonna be delivering a three days boot camp on Data Cloud on uh, TDX coming on March three to the fifth. TDX is six and seven. We always do three days before. Trollhead Academy, we do uh, boot camps on, I'm gonna do one in Data Cloud, but there's Apex, there's Lenovo Components, there's Admin, there's Marketing Cloud, there's a lot of different topics. And that's basically it. So first of all, thank you. And if there's anything else I can answer, please do let me know.